As we head into the second week of 2022 and year three of this pandemic, we are taking a look at some of the biggest political stories to keep your eye on this year. Joining us this morning from Ottawa is host of CTV's Power Play and CTV's Question Period, Evan Solomon. Good to see you. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. God, when you said year three of the pandemic, I almost freaked out. But here we are again. Here, here we are again. Honestly. All right. Let's start there, there with the pandemic. A lot of provinces and territories, including Ontario and Quebec and none of it, are in a lockdown situation over a surge of COVID cases because of Omicron. There's a booster campaign well underway across the country. So what can we be watching for from Parliament Hill in the coming months when it comes to dealing with this pandemic? Well, the pandemic is going to define 2022 just as it did 2021. Now, it's very different. Um, we have restrictions and lockdowns, and we're dealing with Omicron, but let's not pretend, make the old mistake generals make, uh, of fighting the last war. Hmm. The Delta variant was more deadly, less infectious, and we didn't really have vaccines. Now, more than 80, 84 percent of Canadians are double vax, moving into triple vax. Omicron is less deadly. Nonetheless, there's growing political frustration. There's lockdowns that are going to affect the economy. People are sick of it in a way that they weren't before because they're less scared of this one. So the biggest political challenge for the provinces, roll out the boosters more quickly. Open up schools. Open up businesses as fast as possible and mitigate the damage. For the federal government, they, they provided the boosters. Check mark for them. But distinguishing between blame between provinces and the federal government, they want this done. That means you need tests and you need boosters. And once this peaks and we hope the hospital system's not overwhelmed, then it's going to move to the economy. But nothing happens until this pandemic is yeah. done. And there's big provincial elections, including in Ontario, that could be defined by the fourth wave. Well, that's what I, I'm curious about, too. And also, Evan, really quickly, before we move on to the economy, let's talk about rhetoric. The language has really ramped up on both sides from our leaders. I think right now the big political issue is what to do about the unvaccinated. Because, look, the science is clear. If you get your booster shot, you might get Omicron because it's very infectious, but you're probably not going to end up in the hospital. The hospitals are filled up with those who are not vaccinated and the super vulnerable, the immunocompromised and the elderly. And so the big political question is what to do about the unvaccinated. Quebec is saying, you know what, we're going to take a hard line on the unvaccinated. You can't even go to a SAQ or a liquor store there unless you've got the mandate, the passport. And that is going to become three shots. Hard line, that is incentivizing people to get the shot. Aaron O'Toole, the Conservatives leader, is saying, this is going to be here for a long time. We've got to accommodate more unvaccinated people. But look, if the disproportionate number of people in ICUs and hospitals are the unvaccinated, that is becoming a very divisive political issue. And it, again, a very defining issue political issue, not only politically, but people in their own families are trying to figure out who's vaccinated, who's not, and how to approach them. All right, let's get on to the economy. That's a big one, in particular, inflation. As the economy attempts to rebound this year, our inflation rate is still around 5%. Levels not seen since 2003. So the Bank of Canada is indicated it's going to raise interest rates earlier this year, trying to offset some of that pressure. What will this mean for Canadians? Look, inflation, cost of living, no one needs anybody on television to tell them that their grocery bill's gone up, their gas bill's gone up, the cost of housing's gone up. Look, inflation is a real thing, but I just spoke to the former governor of the Bank of Canada, David Dodge, the current governor of the Bank of Canada, Tiff Macklin, and all of them have said, look, this is a supply chain-related issue. In other words, COVID's causing this around the world. People are sitting at home demanding services, and we just can't get the goods because it's difficult. There's worker shortages and COVID. So it's going to peak, and it's going to inflation, they all believe, will start to fall. Doesn't mean the pain is not going to be very real right. at the grocery store and at the, at the pump, but it's going to fall. Still, governments get blamed for inflation. So what should you expect? Inflation will sort of peak and fall. Interest rates, are they going to go up? Yeah, they will go up. But remember, they're going up from historic lows to what still will be historic lows. They may end up peaking at 1.5, 1.75, according to David Dodge, the former Bank of Canada governor. So these are not killer rates and that, that may have to cool the economy. But just one thing to keep in mind, yeah. 
If this pandemic and Omicron keeps rolling, if the fourth wave rolls on, or if the world is hit with a fifth wave, remember, this could stay as it is. High inflation rates, tough to get goods, choked supply lines, and then here we are inching out. Everyone says this is a short-term inflation. <laughs> short-term for economists long-term for the rest of us. Yeah, you know, it's, it's hard news to hear, but I am one who appreciates a bit of a roadmap as we're looking at something that's potentially difficult in this year. I have about 30 seconds left, but we've got to hit on the housing market. Housing affordability has been on a steady decline. The average cost of home in markets like Toronto and Vancouver, more than a million dollars, that's the average. What measures could we see from the federal government to try and address this? Only at the margins. Let's be realistic. Uh, slightly higher interest rates will slightly cool uh, the market. Uh, there's going to be a big push for supply to build more supply, and there's certain strategies. But the market is so big, building more supply will not really offset in big places like Toronto and Vancouver and other markets where they look, we've got 400,000 new Canadians coming every year. They largely go to big urban centers. They want places to live. The pandemic, people want more space. There's lots of social pressures. We cannot build supply fast enough. So anybody that thinks there's going to be a massive government switch that you can pull that is going to cool the housing market, it's just not going to happen. And there is not a single politician out there that's going to do what a lot of them say, a lot of experts say, uh, would be needed, which is put some kind of surtax or capital gains tax on your primary residence. If you're a homeowner, you're like, do not touch my retirement. It is political poison. No one's going to do it. And that's why the housing market likely ain't going to cool that much. Evan, I always appreciate a look ahead with you uh, in the month of January. Take care. Thanks a lot. Happy New Year, everyone. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.